Now this lovely badger picture is one of our starter packs. I'm going to show you how to produce it. I'm going to start by using the white pencil. And that goes in the ears and all the white areas. There won't be a lot of colour put on top of this, so we can afford to be quite generous with our application. Go right up to the edge. Don't worry about the fact that the lines are prominent, because we'll be using very dark colours. And I'll just do this little bit and then I can do the rest of it, which is all around here to go. Now, I'm going to avoid the nose and obviously avoid the dark areas, but everywhere else, including that bit there, just so we don't forget it, will be white. Now, it's almost complete now. Yes. And you can see that there's quite a lot of dust on there. Now, I haven't blown that away because I'm going to rub it in. Try to ensure that you cover all the pastel paper up. Like that. Okay, put that to one side. And now, if you've got one of these, we can use it here. If you haven't, it doesn't matter. You can go to the next level. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rub this dust in. It just ensures that you really have covered the pastel paper up with the white. Now, once I finish this, there won't be very much of that dust left behind. There we are. See, just, just a little bit left there. And what we do, blow that away. Okay, next uh, step is to use the 273 grey. Okay, and what we want to do is add a bit of shading to this. We'll follow the reference picture that you've been given. We don't want to do too much, just make it look a little bit more interesting by especially under there where you're, you're certain to have a little shadow. You can always add this afterwards, so I, I wouldn't worry too much at the moment, but make it just, as I say, just a little interesting. Just down there would be nice, just a little. There, there you go. Now that's nice, isn't it? And again, you can bring back Colour Shaper if you wish, but if you haven't got one of these, just don't worry to do it because it, it's going to look okay. But you see how that um, adds just a little subtlety to it. Maybe we can add some to the ear as well, just there where we're going to meet the black in a moment or two. There you go. Okay. Now, I would suggest that what you do is the eye before we put the very dark colours on. And once again, we come back with the white. And now, I tell you what, folks, what I would do, and what I'm going to do now is to sharpen that pencil to a fine point because I want to get it in between there. And um, the other the other areas are okay. I mean, we can we can some white on top of that but um, I think to get in there we need a sharp point so let me let me just sharpen this up and then I can get it in there and I'll show you I'll come right close on this eye so that you can see um, how, just how much detail we can actually get in there but we'll only do it if the pencils are sharp now I brought you nice and close what we want to do is to put the white in that area there. And you've got two little white highlights in there, one there and one there. 
okay. And there's also just a little bit of white just in there. And all the other areas, not that there's much there, is the 182. That's got a, a brown eye. Now you see, just slightly encroached on that light. This is why I said you've got to have a sharp pencils to do that. Okay. Now, another new colour, which is 177. So on, to, on top of the 182, we put the 177. Again, you've got to have sharp points for it, but you can see the benefit. Look. And into that, a little black. Don't have to be any more fussy than that. That's all you need to do. However, what about all this? Well, now this is where we've got to start thinking about it. We've, these two lines here, indicating lines, are where we put some white. Well, what do you want white and a black fur, Colin? Well, you'll see why in a moment, though. And then some more just in there. You'll be quite amazed how this turns out. Now we can put it in quite strong there. We can redo this as well once we've got the black in and the dark colours in. But drag that down like that. And all this is going to help. Another area where we've got some white is up here. Right. So, and there's more down here. Then we move to our 273. And 273 goes everywhere. While I've got a nice sharp point on this, what I'm going to do is actually go around the eye, I think. Actually, I want that light to be there. Right. Around the eye. And and then stroke it in. And this area that I've already put white in there, you can just play with it a little bit. This is a forerunner to the black, remember, so what we're doing now is preempting where we're going to be putting the black in just a little while. And that can be filtered through there like that. You should, by the time you get to this stage, see where that black's going to be. Now it's come from there. Take your time, and it filters into the white. Go right onto that line, covering it up. and go in between. Leave these two areas just for the time being. It's always very wise to, and I will tell you many, many times, if you follow me, that you work in the direction that you see the hair or fur lying in. And this helps to give you the impression of realism. You see, I'm taking my time, and this is what you should do. Never rush it. And then gradually, follow the reference picture as well. If, you, if you're following me, that's fine. But if you're not watching the video when you're doing this, then look at the reference picture. All the information is there. But this just gives you an opportunity, really, just to play with it because if anything goes wrong now we can 
change it. Once the black goes on, it's not easy to do that. Uh, I come right into there and again filter into there. So we've got that, that white on the outside there, looking good. Now this over here is just a little easier because we haven't got any eyes to worry about. Just that little bit of white that we put in there will lighten up the grey. But it's when the black goes on that that becomes much more important. It creates the shine that we're looking for. There we are. Now that is more or less finished. Okay, now put that, put that to one side and we bring in the big numbers now. One double nine, which is the black. You can't, well you can, but I would never suggest you put black directly onto the paper, whatever medium you're using. By putting a cushion underneath it, it gives you a much better impression. Now here, the first time we're going to hit this, I'm leaving the eye to last here because we'll have a bit of practice when we do this. We go in between, like that, and it's quite strong. So once you establish that, And then come back the other side there, leave it, move on, cover the line up. I say leave that alone just for the moment until we get a bit further down. Come down with that. And here we just got to be just a little careful because we've got an area there. Now that, that line I put in there, just put, draw that in again. This is the pencil line that I had, or the, in my case, or, or the line drawing line. Put that in there like that. Again, keep it quite light to start with. We can come back in with much more strength in a minute. When, where it would really be dramatic to filter that back up into just as we did with the grey you can just draw that outline it would be a good idea here still keeping that light there like that okay now I would suggest you blow that off I know I said don't do it with the white, but here it's obscuring what you're seeing. So it's a good idea to do that now. Here we come to the difficult bit. We've got to come around there. Make sure that we've got that quite dark. And then we've got, oh, hang on. I've lost it. Now this is what's going to happen to you. You've got to be careful. Make sure you've got the white in there. Like that, and two little white highlights, put them back in again. This is what I was after doing. And now underneath there, Draw that bit in. And then come down. You want to leave this area quite light. This is why I've said to you, don't push too hard with the black, because once you commit yourself, you can't return. And there's just a little more black here. And then that filters down. Now that looks silly, but it won't. Watch. Coming back in now with the dark colour and really 
push home. That's got to be dark. And I would suggest that you also use a colour shaper here. Let me just put that to one side. Bring the colour shaper up. Let's clean it off. And just push that black in because it's got to be really strong and you don't want to leave any of the pastel paper showing through. Got the idea of that? Just there. So now that's nice and dark. Remember, blow the dust off. Now I'm going to show you on this one how I want that to work. We come over the top with the black because we don't want white on there. We want a sheen, a white sheen. Now you're going to be amazed at this in a moment. It looks though we've ruined it, doesn't it? Bring back your colour shaper and just lightly, because we put the white underneath there, it's always going to be there and to be seen. You can see that? But then what we're going to do is bring the white back. Like that. I don't think you want it any stronger than that. So let's go to the next one. So that one's comparatively easy compared with this one. Now if we're, we're filtering up from here and yes, we will be putting white back in there. Keep the dust away though. Now do what I did just now with up here and gradually drag the black across. Now this is a little bit brighter here. You'll look at the reference picture, you'll see that it's just a little lighter there, or brighter should I say. And then it filters up from here. This is where the colour shaper, if you've got it, will come in handy. Put the black to one side and use the color shaper. You can still see that light underneath. That's why I said you've got to put the white on first. It would be tempting to put it on afterwards once you finish the black, but it doesn't work quite that way. Now, while I've got that in, in my hand, let's just also, because we're going to do quite a lot of work in here in a minute, make this look more attractive and again you just start to interfere with the white but because we put it on we can always bring it back right now let's just do a little tiny bit more work make it a bit stronger now because we blended it this go this color that I'm putting on now goes into the blended section so it's all easier looks better remember we've got to put the white back in there again it's very easy to lose that eye and I would suggest what you do is you, before we go any further just sure see it's beginning to look right now now, how do we do this? Well, I showed you how to do it just now. Let me just just blend that just a little more because we now need to have it, as, as I said, as a sheen. This is hard, but it's rewarding. Now we can be a little bit more prominent with the white there. 
like that and then gradually even though we've got the black there the white will still register uh, and we can drink, drag that all the way down it obviously won't come out white because it's going on top of black that looks good doesn't it now this area here we can just bring the white back again and on the at the edge filter through like that. Now there's only one other thing we could do while we're here. It's difficult to put the white into the black. Let me just show you what I mean by that. See you can you can do it but it's not easy. So what you do is you put the white into the black and, and drag the black back. Do you see how that's working? It just stops this from being just a harsh line. Don't come too far though. I think that is absolutely fine. It's a little bit more realistic than... Now that's looking really nice. Just come in here as well. All the way down. And we can even come up here but this time we go the other way like that so what you're doing is picking a little bit of black up on the edge of your white and it's just breaking the line which would happen naturally and that can work all the way down there now that looks really good doesn't it you always put a little bit more black in if you feel you want to touch it up make it look a little more real i think like that bit now you can also do that here too just put the right on the very edge like that anyway that's good that i'd leave that alone that looks really good. See how nice now that shading that I put in there. Now this is where we've got to be a bit more careful. Now, we, now if you remember we put white here so gradually ease that into that area of white. The fact you put it underneath means it'll be easier when you put the white back on. Follow the black line again, keep that dust away. It does interfere with the detail. Right down there and down to there. Now you see how it, it looks time consuming, but it, it's actually quite quick. Because you only have to do it once. Here we are, like that. Come down here with that. And yes, we are going to do the same trick as we did over here, just in a second or two. But when we get to there, we don't, because that's when the snout in other words, this, this light is in front of that. But this is different. Let's see what we can do with this now. We can probably use the white just there to interfere with that, like that. Now that is lovely. But don't do, do that down here because the, um, well, you, well, you could, I suppose, but uh, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. I'll just leave that alone. That's a snout. Well, there we are. Now that's come up really well. Let me pull back because it's nice to see that 
from a little bit further away. Now we're going to do the nose. <laughs> 